It's time for Spiritual Awakening Radio, a Sant Mott Satsang podcast edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio. My name is James Bean. It's nice to be back again after a brief Easter break. During that period, I was interviewed on SMTV, a five-part series. And of course, SMTV promotes the vegan diet. It was also Easter. And so I left at the top of the page my recent program on the vegetarianism of Jesus. That made sense, given the fact it was Easter and I was being interviewed a five-part series on SMTV, including about the vegetarianism of early Christianity. But it is nice to be back to the weekly routine of offering satsangs online, spiritual teachings of the masters, the path of the masters. Today, you'll hear various eclectic readings from different sources, and then we will focus in on the teachings of Hazur Maharaj Rai Salagram Bahadur, his spiritual classic known as Radhaswami Mat Prakash, which means light on the teachings of the Lord of the soul. It was the first book to be written in the English language by a master, it was published in 1897 and was the first Sant Mott book to appear in North America, written in English, that people started studying. And it remains a great spiritual classic, a kind of gospel of Sant Mott, summarizing the teachings rather well. If you're listening to this by way of YouTube, I have a photo, an image of this book, an old copy published 75 years ago that's been somewhat augmented through digital editing, but I'm using the image of an old copy of Radhaswami Mat Prakash. And next to that image is a rare, colorized image of the author of that book, Huzur Maharaj Raisalagram Bahadur of Agra. Welcome to the Sant Mat Satsang Podcast. I have some news, uh, some podcast venue news and other behind-the-scenes news, but I will put that at the end of the podcast today so we can jump right in and get off to a quick start. Within the human body, with eyes closed during meditation, there are different kinds of light, colors, stars, moons, and suns, dark voids, lights within lights, visions within visions, like a tunnel. And beyond these is bright light, like the noonday sun. But few are the seers, so few there are who speak of these realities. Only mystics are interested in mysticism. In addition to reading from the teachings of Sant Mat Masters, I do include some mystics from other cousin schools of spirituality, Kabbalah, Sufism, Christian mystics, Gnostic teachings, and uh, including the Syriac saints of Eastern Christian mysticism. This is from St. Isaac the Syrian, a quote about inner hearing and mystic vision found in an anthology of Syriac writers from Qatar in the 7th century. Inner hearing, mystic vision. Make me worthy to behold you with opened eyes, which are more interior than the eyes of the body. Create new eyes in me, you who created new eyes for the blind man. Close my exterior ears and open hidden ears which hear the silence and the sounds of the Spirit, that by your Spirit I might proclaim the word of silence which arises in the heart but is not written, which moves in the intellect but is not spoken, though spoken by the lips of the Spirit, and is heard by incorporeal hearing. 
St. Isaac of Nineveh. St. Isaac of Nineveh on the spiritual senses. The soul has ears, the soul has eyes, and can contemplate the kingdom of the heavens within and beyond. Can explore inner space with its inner ability to see and hear. The following is a mystic poem of Niloba of Maharashtra, titled, This Light. Astonishing this light, so different. Even with eyes closed, you see it. It was never lit, nor does it ever go out. The luminous soul makes it shine eternally. No color, yet all colors. This light is illumined by life itself. Neela says, today God in his grace used my offering of the lamp of devotion simply as an excuse to let me experience this light. The inner light is actually always there. It's we who come and go. Our attention focuses in meditation, and this creates the illusion of the light appearing, quote unquote, and then disappearing, quote unquote, as our concentration fades and we conclude our meditation. Our gaze comes and goes. Our ability to see the light comes and goes, but the light itself is always there. From ignorance to knowledge and wisdom, from darkness to light, from the absence of love to the experience of the ocean of love, Though the material sphere acts as a dense layer of overcast skies, obscuring our vision of what lies beyond, the masters have revealed the secrets of obtaining paradise to anyone who yearns to discover them. Saying to their students, very much like Rumi did, this is in your power, my friend. The following is the dedication to the book, The Way Out Is In, a spiritual classic of this path of the masters. This detailed and more comprehensive account of the kingdom of God is true. It is for the exclusive use and guidance of the good and sincere souls who wish to improve their spiritual vision and explore the light of the kingdom of God. It is for those who are not satisfied with the blind captivity of their souls in this perishable cage that these few hints are given to enable them to realize the spiritual path that is hidden from their physical eyes. Most usually remain stuck in their beliefs for life and rarely change no matter what evidence might be presented. And so the carnistic meat issue, a kind of hostility by some to the idea of going veg or being vegan, is just the tip of a fascinating, vast iceberg so to speak, revealing that beliefs mostly are inherited, downloaded by human beings at a very young age, not chosen. Not chosen. Not chosen. For most, free will seems to be an illusion. The Greek word metanoia, 
means change, an ability to change one's mind. What a radical thing in this world that is. One can change one's mind as well as actions. There is much hope in this. There's much potential in this. It is possible to question one's beliefs, making conscious choices for oneself. The following is from a spiritual classic that many people are familiar with called As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. A man's mind may be likened to a garden. A man's mind may be likened to a garden which may be intelligently cultivated or allowed to run wild. But whether cultivated or neglected, it must and will bring forth. If no useful seeds are put into it, then an abundance of useless weed seeds will fall therein and will continue to produce their kind. As a man thinketh, so is he. As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. A key method of learning spiritual masters of the East and West often recommend the contemplation of the wisdom of saints and mystics. Not just anybody's wisdom, but specifically, most of all, the wisdom of saints and mystics. This is a passage from Isaac of Nineveh, second part, translated by Sebastian Brock. We should consider the labor of reading scripture to be something extremely elevated, whose importance cannot be exaggerated, for it serves as the gate by which the intellect enters into the divine mysteries and takes strength for attaining luminosity. It bathes with enjoyment as it wanders over the acts of God's dispensation, which have taken place for the benefit of humanity. Acts which make us stand continually in wonder, and from which meditation, too, takes strength. St. Isaac of Nineveh was a mystic from the Syrian Christian tradition, and of course, Saint Maud is sometimes open to quoting from cousin saints and mystics in other traditions, Kabbalah, Sufism, the Gnostics, Neoplatonism, and so on. And yeah, that includes St. Isaac of Nineveh, especially during this podcast. He speaks of a simple technique, and the master's of Saint Mott also advised this as you sit down at home to have a home satsang, a home meditation, just read a paragraph or two from something, doesn't matter what, you know, a, a poem or two of Kabir, a poem of Swamiji Maharaj, just some, some brief reading, a couple of paragraphs of prose or poetry of the masters to help you get settled and centered. It helps with the meditation, a little mini satsang at home to prepare your mind and body for meditation. so I believe, belong to the family of God and are of one nature. Everyone experiences the same emotions, regardless of the place or condition of a person's birth, whether he is a barbarian or a Greek, so long as he is a human being. That's refreshing. It's from the ancient world, too. That's a quote from Apollonius of Tiana. I saw that in my travels and thought, wow, at last, I've heard about Apollonius of Tiana, but, you know, not much in written form from him. In fact, send me an email if anyone listening to this knows of a book of the discourses of Apollonius of Tiana. I'm not sure there is much written down, but I did find this quote and found it to be very wonderful. 
You know, we're all one humanity. Later verified by astronauts experiencing the overview effect in Earth orbit or traveling around the moon and back, seeing the Earth. Floating in space, no borders, no Buddhist areas, no geography owned by caliphates or Christian, the Christian zone, the Hindu zone, just one planet without any borders or boundaries, a single Earth floating in space. Divine Intervention. This is a fascinating passage from the Syriac Clementine Recognitions and Homilies, which I recently discovered. A divine voice speaks, saying, I, knowing the intentions of all those yet to be before the foundations of the world, have secretly met and made myself known to everyone, as is worthy of each person. But as this is so, I have willed to be recognized and give rest to those who take refuge in me. An interesting passage, a divine voice speaking, a supreme being who says that I meet with everyone, I make myself known to every human being in the world. That's a fascinating passage. I wonder if people feel that way. They have this sense of divine presence fill the room. Do some forget that experience? Others don't forget, and for them it becomes a conversion experience. And they seek a spiritual path that is compatible with that experience. I wonder if everyone feels that way. Probably many don't. They probably don't think of themselves as, as a small child or someone very young in age, having some sort of mystical encounter with the Supreme Being. Or is it that they have forgotten that? The third eye is very open when we're very young. And that supernatural realm tends to close for most people. We get more and more closed-minded as we get engulfed and caught up in this world. I wonder how many people think it's true that they've had some sort of encounter with the Supreme Being, perhaps at a young age. Maybe they have forgotten, but the spiritual path is always about remembering, not forgetting. And lastly, from a Syriac source, this is a verse from the Book of the Odes, translated by Sebastian Brock. Open your ears, and I shall speak to you. Give me yourself, so that I too may give you myself. Perfection can only be found within says Maharishi Mehi Paramhans in his collection of mystic hymns called the Padavali. O traveler, seek the path that lies within you. You and your beloved are in the same body. Your beloved is pervading everywhere, but not being perceived. Those initiated by the master are able to recognize him within their bodies. O oh, traveler, if you wish to go alone on the path of the Supreme Being, look for the path within and do not delay. And this is from A Spiritual Seeker's Guide, the wisdom of Dayal Sahib of the Dayal Puri Satsang one of my favorite Saint-Mont books. If a man takes inspiration from the lives of saints and mystics, the knowers of the essence, and introduces their teachings into his daily life, 
a phenomenal change will take place in him or her. He will feel that it is futile to search for perfection in the outer world. Supreme wisdom, supreme bliss will appear within him and the creator of the universe will be with him. Yet he will live like an ordinary person. He will be in communion with the celestial sound current. He will distribute the fruits of his knowledge to all regardless of caste and creed. You must practice the repetition of the holy name Radhaswami, which is the creator and sustainer of the universe. When this name appears within you, the knowledge of death and life after death will be attained by you. The benefits of this higher knowledge will be immeasurable, but there will be no outer manifestation of this. This was the lifestyle of all the saints. This will hold true for all times as long as humanity lasts. Instead of looking for the best of man in the outer world, you must practice the spiritual exercises prescribed by Santmat with the aid of a living spiritual master and you will attain perfection within and you will attain perfection within a reading from a spiritual seeker's guide Rumi says, the soul sometimes leaves the body, then returns. <laughs> says Rumi, he will be awake even while asleep, so that he will see dreams while awake. A kind of cryptic verse of Rumi poetry. Followed now by an interpretation found in the book with Three Masters, with the Three Masters, Volume 3. When the soul is concentrated at the point between the eyes, in other words, the third eye center, our condition is the same as at the time of death. If we now take the soul further up, we will become familiar with the path we must take after death. This process is called meditation. The saints tell us with meditation we can gradually develop the habit of holding the soul at or above the eyes, thereby conquering sleep. When your soul is fixed above the eyes, outwardly you look as though you are asleep, but inwardly you are fully conscious. Mystic verses of St. Tulsi Sahib of Hathras about this journey within. The soul that unites with the Shabad, the sound current, the inner sound, the sound of God, travels freely throughout the creation each day. Each day the soul journeys freely throughout the creation, rejoicing in bliss with its true Lord. It sees for itself the secrets of the unfathomable proclaimed by the Vedas and other texts. Reaching the original abode, it describes the true essence. Its true home is said to be at the lotus feet of the beloved on the other shore. Says Tulsi, the soul bride is cherished by her beloved basking in his presence. She remains in a state of ecstasy every moment. The soul that unites with the Shabad travels freely throughout the creation each day, says Tulsi Sahib, Book of Shabdavali. The soul is the lover the Supreme Being is the Beloved. And a kind of 
approach of divine romance called in India bhakti or prem and bhakti is the foundation of the spiritual path. Not just Surat Shab Yoga of light and sound, but love light and sound is the true path of the masters. The power of love. The path of the masters is a spiritual path of love as well as inner light and inner sound. Baba Devi Sahib from the essential teachings of Baba Devi Sahib says, we should understand that bhakti or love is the life or soul of the entire universe. A point echoed by Rabindranath Tagore, the famous Bengali poet who said, love is the only reality and is not a mere sentiment. It is the ultimate truth that lies at the heart of creation. Hazrat Sultan Bahu, love has inspired me to explore the heavens. From earth, it has raised me to the worlds of spirit. Kabir says, as the river enters into the ocean, so my heart touches thee. The ocean of which Kabir is speaking of there is the ocean of love, called by some the Anurag Sagar. Lately, I've been enjoying the mystic poetry of Sant Cherandas, who says, the day is spent calling out for the beloved and the night in the beloved's contemplation. The one who yearns for the Lord easily attains union and understanding through devotion or bhakti. Separated from the Lord, she is yearning for him. She has no friend besides him. Every moment, day and night, she is ever focused on meeting her beloved. It is the name of the beloved, she repeats. It is the beloved she contemplates. The beloved is her very life, and she too is as precious to her beloved. Huzur Maharaj Rai Selagram said, The Supreme Being is a boundless ocean of spirit or love, and the human being, a drop or current of this spirit or love from this ocean. And love being the very essence and means of existence of the whole creation, it follows that no effort in any direction, temporal or spiritual, unless actuated by love or affectionate regard, can be crowned with success and the work or labor rendered easy, sweet, and harmonious. A reading from the book Radhaswami Mat Prakash, to approach meditation, most of all, should be done in a spirit of love and devotion, or prem and bhakti, if success is the goal. And this very much is a central teaching to be found in Radhaswami Mat Prakash and the other writings of Hazur Maharaj Rai Selagram, the great architect of modern-day Sant Mat, who wrote a whole series of encyclopedic volumes known as Prim Patra Radhaswami volumes one through six and scores of other discourses on this path of the masters for the first time in the history of India just spelling out 
all of the teachings, documenting all of the teachings of this path of the masters in written form, in Prem Patra Radhaswami, Prem Bani Radhaswami, and all of the other wonderful writings of Hazur Maharaj, Rai Salagram. I've been a writer, I've been a, I've been a reader, actually, although I have actually quoted Salagram in my own writings. I've been a, a reader of Salagram since about 1981. I'm a fan of his teachings. The following is from the love chapter of Hazur Maharaj Rai Salagram, who was the second master of the Radhaswami Satsang of Agra. From the book Radhaswami Mat Prakash, Light on the Teachings of the Lord of the Soul, originally written by Hazur in English, composed by Hazur in English, one of the very first Sant Mat books to appear in the Western world, published back in 1897. God Bhakti, love and devotion for the Supreme Being. Hazur Maharaj. This practice can be conducted easily and comfortably if the devotee has love for the Supreme Being. Without love, it will be too difficult to practice Surat Shab Yoga inner light and sound meditation with good result to be obtained within a short time. The Supreme Being, being a boundless ocean of spirit or love, and human being, being a drop or current of spirit or love from this ocean, and love being the very essence and means of existence of the whole creation, it follows that no effort in any direction, temporal or spiritual, unless actuated by love or affectionate regard, can be crowned with success and the work or labor rendered easy, sweet, and harmonious. Love is most sublime, having its origin in the highest region, the abode of the Supreme Being. In whatever heart it springs up, it will gradually raise and carry the fortunate possessor of this lofty and noble passion to the highest region. All good qualities and goodness itself will gradually find their home in the heart in which love dwells, and all bad qualities will be rooted out by and by. Whatever a man fully of pure love thinks or does is all wisdom, while the thoughts and works of worldly wise men are full of selfishness and folly. Knowledge without love for the Supreme Being is futile and tends towards untruth or darkness or materialism, while love turns everything to good use and leads to enlightenment and truth. Even worldly love is attended with goodness, happiness, and comfort to all concerned. How much more good would then result to humanity in general if the same love becomes spiritual and is directed towards the Supreme Being, the merciful and compassionate, kind parent of the whole cosmos? Self-love brings on egotism or pride and sows the seed of hatred, jealousy, and disregard in the minds of kindreds, associates, and neighbors, while pure and sacred love for the Supreme Being creates in the heart humility, meekness, and an affectionate regard for kindreds, neighbors, and humanity in general. Pure and holy love is always ready to spend regardless whatever it has for the sake of its beloved, the Supreme Father, and the benefit of humanity without any distinction, whereas self-love or love of world always tries to appropriate everything to itself, even at the risk and loss of others. Pure and holy love is always ready to sacrifice anything whatsoever to gain admission into the presence of the Beloved, the Supreme Father, whereas self-love will never part with anything except for the sake of its own aggrandizement and indulgence 
in sensual pleasures. The noble passion of love is most powerful and strong. It removes all obstacles and thorns in its way and disregards all superstitions, doubts, and skepticism. Where pure love dwells, there sheds the light of grace as it forms a link with the spirit or love current from its source, the Supreme Being. I think I'll reread that. Where pure love dwells, there sheds the light of grace as it forms a link with the spirit or love current from its source, the Supreme Being. Love or the power of attraction is the basis of the whole creation and the cause of its sustenance and preservation. The Supreme Being loves and takes special care of those who love Him with all their heart and soul and gradually draws them towards Himself, the grand center of pure light and attraction, while those whose hearts are imbued with worldly love and passions recede from this center, or in other words, they of themselves fly away towards the circumference or darkness and untruth. Every wave of love rising in a lover's heart brings tidings of goodness and joy from the beloved, and every thought springing up in such a heart is a harbinger of good works and good services for the sake of the beloved. Love has no bounds, knows no restrictions, and is not limited by conditions, and like its source, is extensive and far-reaching in its beneficial results. A heart devoid of love or affection is as hard as stone and does not form a suitable receptacle for the light of heavenly grace and mercy. Sincere love is reciprocal. So if one has a heart full of love for the Supreme Being, he is sure to be attracted towards him by grace, mercy, and holy light which will gradually illumine his inner self, and then all menial or worldly affections and desires will gradually disappear. The Love Chapter of Hazura Maharaj from Radhaswami Mat Prakash From Radhaswami Mat Prakash, Light on the Teachings of the Lord of the Soul, published in English in 1897, the first Sant Mat book to appear in the West. The method for taking back the spirit to its original source is to ride the sound current. At present, the spirit entity of a human being is residing in the third or material spiritual region and has therefore to do all the work here by means of the senses and the mind, which are mediums between it and the material objects. And consequently, as a natural result, its power has become quite hampered. But as soon as it begins to ascend, the powers which are now lying dormant become active and the spirit entity acquires ultra-material or higher power. The method for taking back the spirit to its supreme source is first to concentrate at the focus of the eyes, the third eye center. The spirit and mind which are diffused in our body and in a manner, in a, in a manner tied to the external objects by desires and passions and next to commence its journey homewards by 
attending to the internal sound, or in other words, by riding the life or sound current which has originally emanated from the Supreme Source. I think I'll read that paragraph again. It's in kind of a the English translation sometimes with these older books are a bit less than clear. So here goes again. The method for taking back the spirit to its supreme source is first to concentrate at the focus of the eyes, third eye center. The mind and spirit which are diffused in our body and in a manner tied to external objects by desires and passions. And next to commence its journey homewards by attending to the internal sound, or in other words, by riding the life or sound current, which has originally emanated from the Supreme Source, Hazur Maharaj. We ride the sound like a fish going upstream. The Supreme Being is in the ocean of love. The sound current is what the soul swims through to get back to that ocean of love. The river of the sound empties into the ocean of love. And that's a way of looking at Surat Shab Yoga meditation on the inner sound and becoming one with or absorbed by the inner sound. Excerpts from Letters to Initiates by Huzur Maharaj. Go on regularly with your meditation practice, keeping your mind and senses undisturbed as far as is possible, and trust in the compassion of the Supreme Father to grant you strength gradually as you advance. You will progress inwardly, daily. The merciful Radhaswami, Lord of the Soul, was also pleased to declare that Whenever anybody is initiated into the Surat Shabda Marga, the path of inner light and sound, his contact is immediately established with Sat Parush Radhaswami. Hence, Sat Parush, merciful Radhaswami, would continue to shower his grace on anyone who would sincerely perform the meditation practices to some extent with feelings of love and would not indulge in evil tendencies of his mind as far as possible, i.e. he would gradually make the mind and spirit of such a devotee ascend higher and higher internally and would protect him from the obstacles put by Maya and Ka, illusion and the lord of time or negative power. In other words, more selections from the letters of Hazur Maharaj to initiates. The morning time will be the best time for you to practice bhajan, meditation upon the sound current. Go on with your practice as much as you can and the Supreme Father, through his mercy, will gradually help you in the purification of the mind and the devotional practice will then become easy and pleasant. But this cannot be accomplished in a hurry, and so therefore be patient and have trust. Adhere to patience and trust. If you remember the Supreme Father by practicing devotion and by sometimes repeating the holy name, you will find that grace won't forsake you, but on the other hand will always extend its protection to you in all matters. The Supreme Being, Radhaswami, the Lord of the Soul, is our true guide. He is always with us, within us, sees us doing every little bit of internal and external work, and helps us in everything good. Faith worth the name must be living. It must consist in acquiring an affection, or rather an intense love, for the Supreme Being and an intense desire to approach Him. And this latter we can do in the interior of the body, for the path is within us. 
You are quite you are you are quite right in saying that true and sincere love and bhakti or devotion are what is required of a practitioner like yourself. And finally today from Hazur Maharaj from Radhaswami Mat Prakash. The Sat Sat Guru will always help the initiate or satsangi internally and externally. I really like that saying a lot because it's saying that this path of the masters is not solely confined to your interior existence, your interior space, but it also emanates on out and affects the external world. That divine grace extends to the external world around us as well. And in that there is much hope. Radhaswami Mat Prakash, Light on the Teachings of the Lord of the Soul, is available for free online. I have it in the Radhaswami section of my e-library, which you can access by going to spiritualawakeningradio.com. Click, click on the uh, library tab and you can get to it. Uh, or you can send an email to me. I'll be happy to send uh, the book to you as an attachment or send you the link to it so you can download it or read it online as you prefer. My email address is james at spiritualawakeningradio.com. Ask for the book Radhaswami Mat Prakash, a great spiritual classic of this Sant Mat tradition. A kind of gospel of Sant Mat, a good introduction to the path. And it's a very wonderful book. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, one of the key teachings, one of the foundational teachings that is especially emphasized by Huzur Maharaj is the foundation of love, love and devotion. The spiritual path of meditation should be approached with a spirit of love and devotion. That's one of the key teachings of Huzur Maharaj. And an associate of his by the name of Baba Devi Sahib of the Hathras Satsang as well. If you read the teachings of Baba Devi Sahib, he too uh, like Hazur Maharaj, has a great emphasis upon love and devotion, the bhakti aspect of this path of the masters, that inner light and sound meditation, when done at its finest, at its best, when it's most effective, is done in a spirit of love and devotion, a kind of divine romance between the lover and the beloved. That's what opens the third eye to the realms beyond, makes it an easier path to take when done with love and devotion. This program is now available as a podcast through most of the major podcast venues. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Podbay FM, Podbean, most of your podcast venues, curators, you know, of podcasts coming from other sources to Libsyn uh, is the source. And if you go to my website, you'll see new buttons there. On the main page of my website, spiritualawakeningradio.com, there's a, an Apple button, there's a Spotify button, and if you click on some other speakers and microphones, you'll find a couple of Libsyn buttons as well. This program is available also at the Internet Archive, archive.org, which is an impressive organization. I really like what they do, trying to back up the Internet to 
preserve all of the books and all of the information to back up copies of websites. I really like what archive.org is doing, its mission, since the early days of the World Wide Web. And you'll find Spiritual Awakening Radio there as well. And of course, uh, most of all at YouTube, the largest archive is at the Sant Mat Radhaswami channel of YouTube. There is a donate button on the website if you'd like to support this program, this effort. And thanks to those of you who have donated in the past and continue at this time, despite the mayhem of the world economy or lack thereof. You know, the Great Depression, the sequel, you know, the future seems unsure, but we are just getting started with podcast venues and have plans of doing Sant Mat Satsang podcasts and other spiritual awakening radio programs and podcasts for the foreseeable future, exploring the world of spirituality, comparative religion books, and especially the path of the masters, the saints and mystics. Visit the website, spiritualawakeningradio.com. If you'd like to communicate, if you'd like to correspond, you can send me an email at this address, james at spiritualawakeningradio.com. For a spiritual awakening, I'm James Bean. <laughs>